Do you sometimes feel that you overcompensate in being a parent, maybe for shortcomings that you have or wanting to do always the best? Today, we're going to be talking about understanding overcompensation in parenting. Hi, my name is Yvette Bros, and welcome to today's topic, understanding overcompensation in parenting. I really look forward to this because this is a topic that has deeply also affected me as a parent. So first of all, just quickly for those of you who are new, I'm best and well known for having written this big book called Psychosomatics of Children. So if you're a parent, this is an excellent book to help to learn and understand the psychosomatic stress between your child's perhaps mental or physical challenges or ailments. So this is a great resource to have. And also this big book is for parents. Of course, I didn't forget about you. There's a big book called Metaphysical Anatomy. And this is the psychosomatic stress for adults, 679 medical ailments. And all these books you can find on Amazon or at Yvette books.com and also join my intuitive body workshop there you're going to learn how to read the body like a book so you can learn to understand your psychosomatic messages or your child's psychosomatic messages a lot better as well and join me every wednesday we have free fast track master classes as well so you can jump in there as well check it out on yvetterose.com and i will see you there because it is so much fun now let's dive into today's topic understanding overcompensation in a parenting styles now, overcompensation tends to happen for various reasons. Now, when I, for example, here look at the reason that why I, for example, was overcompensating in parenting was I didn't have boundaries with my children. I had terrible boundaries because my dad was so strict. He was a very, very gnarly, gnarly, <laughs> strict person. And so I always remember how suffocated I felt, how trapped I felt, how unhappy I was. And I realized and I decided, you know, I never want my child to feel that way. And so I completely overcompensated by not having boundaries with my children. And I started to pay the price for that when they hit the terrible twos and threes. Of course, it's terrible twos and threes for a reason, but it felt a little bit worse because they didn't understand limits. They didn't understand boundaries, which was, of course, my fault. So that's where I, for example, overcompensated in my parenting style with boundaries. Now, let's dive into some different points here that can cause this overcompensation in parenting. Childhood deprivation. Now, parents who grew up with limited resources or opportunities or emotional support might be driven to ensure their children do not face the same hardships. And that is also exactly what I did. And in this case, for me specifically, it was related to boundaries. Guilt and regret. Now, some parents carry a lot of guilt or regret from their own upbringing, believing that they maybe could have had a better childhood if only their parents had provided more. And so now what do we do? We throw as much as we can to a child because that now becomes our language for love. So the more a child gets in terms of material value, the more they can actually get spoiled. But they don't learn the value of real, true, meaningful love. And it's not because the parent can't love them. It's because they're trying to love and give too much that the child almost becomes confused between what is love and what is a gift. Social pressure. Now, societal norms and also this, this desire to keep up with peers and also leading parents, especially like we, I call it leading parents because you sometimes have these groupies of parents who are just kind of like doing their thing and they kind of like set the trends. Now, if you feel insecure in your parenting style, you're more than likely to be following or getting caught up in these type of parenting trends, because this can now be another form of overcompensating by giving a child maybe whatever it is that these trends are coming up with to always just feel like you're in, in the mainstream at least, because if my child has what every other child has, then I'm being a good parent. Parental expectations. Now, parents might also have very high expectations for their children and believe that providing, for example, more materialisms or resources will actually lead to, lead to better outcomes, which often actually I have learned in my case is that doesn't really work. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I ended up, you know, giving too much to my children as well, and they didn't appreciate what I was giving them later on in life anymore because they knew mom was just going to give it. I'm going to get it at the end of the day. Let's look at pitfalls of overcompensation. 
Now, while the intention to give your child the best possible start in life is admirable, overcompensation can also have tremendous, tremendous unintended consequences. Now, the first one is entitlement. Children who are overindulged might actually end up developing a sense of entitlement and come to expect that their every desire will always be met. Lack of resilience. Now, overcompensation can also hinder a child's development or the resiliency and their problem-solving skills because children might not learn how to cope with disappointment or with challenges or with adversity because parents just always throw a solution at the child. They don't learn those skills themselves. So now they become reliant on always relying on support outside of them to always be rescued when there's a problem. Materialism. And more overemphasis on material possessions can actually lead to a child to associate their happiness and their self-worth with what they have, right? With material wealth. Unhealthy gratitude. Children who receive excessively can now struggle to actually really truly appreciate the value of what they have, leading to lack of gratitude. Equality awareness. Now, siblings or peers or other kids, they might become aware of disparities in treatment, which can now lead to jealousy, rivalry, and a lot of strained relationships and conflict. Now, let's look at strategies to stop overcompensation in parenting. Reflect on your motives. Take time to reflect on your own upbringing and also the reasons behind your parenting decisions. Ask yourself if you're trying to provide for your child's needs or if you feel driven by unresolved emotions from your past. Set boundaries. Establish clear boundaries when it comes to indulgence, right? So here, determine what is really truly necessary and beneficial for your child's development and also what might actually be excessive. Teach your child financial literacy. Educate your child about the value of money, budgeting, and also saving. Encourage them to understand the cost of things that they want to have in life and that not everything is for free. Prioritize experiences. Instead of focusing solely on material possessions, prioritize experiences that create lasting memories and also personal growth. These experiences can be so much more valuable than possessions. Teach your child gratitude. Help them to understand what gratitude is and also to encourage the practice of gratitude that your child can express appreciation for what they have and engage in activities like gratitude journals or also discussions about the things that you are thankful for. Like maybe having every morning or every evening, have a gratitude discussion. Encourage also responsibility. Assign, for example, age-appropriate responsibilities and chores to your child. This will help them to develop a sense of accountability and also understanding of the effort that's required to actually maintain a household and also structure and order in a person's life. Because the more they can learn to understand how to keep structure in a household, the more emotionally structured and mentally structured it will help them to also be. Help them with resilience. Allow your child sometimes to face some challenges and disappointments with discernment and provide it that they are safe. Instead of always immediately solving their problems, provide them maybe with a little bit of guidance and support to navigate these difficulties and challenges so that they can learn how to overcome it themselves. Communication is key. Talk to your child openly about your values and your intentions as well, and also the reasons behind your parenting decisions, and encourage them to also express their thoughts and their feelings as well. And last one is lead by example. One that we sometimes fail as parents, right? Be the role model by, this, by actually demonstrating financial responsibility, behavior, gratitude, resilience, and all these problem-solving skills and qualities also in your own life as well. So parents, there you have it. Thank you for being here with me today. And until next time, be the light that you are.